So uh, let's start. Um, this talk is called Drupal 8 Undercover Initiatives. Uh, I've been giving this talk for uh, some months now, so maybe some people in the audience uh, already seen this. Can you raise your hands? Okay, please don't spoil the jokes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, first, um, well, I don't know where they point out. First, I want to make a disclaimer here. Um, some stuff that I'm going to uh, tell you and show you may or may not be true. <laughs> uh, so that I want to lie is that some things that, um, I mean, Drupal 8 is moving really, really fast. And some things that you, you see here may have changed in the past days or may not be um, effectively true uh, after all or may not happen. Um, it's better now. I mean, the amount of lies is less than it used to be. So, um, should be fine. Um, I want to take a, I stole this image, I don't know the origin, I tried to find it, but I couldn't find who is the original maker of this image. So, sorry about that. But, um, we are in a moment in the Drupal development process where we can choose um, between um, the old way to do stuff and the new way to do stuff. So we are on this uh, cross path, I guess, and we need to choose in which side, which side uh, we like the most. So um, what I'm going to present here is the Drupal 8 stuff. So. Um, this is me. Um, I work for a company called Imbra. Um, we call ourselves Drupal Dreamers. I mean, it's a little ticky, but um, if you want a badge, I have plenty of them. And I'm. It's a very cool badge. It doesn't say Imbra anywhere, so. <laughs> <laughs> just says just says Drupal Dreamers. So um, I'm a very active uh, member of the community, and you can find me in uh, the camera mostly everywhere. So, Drupal 8 initiatives. Let's talk about, um, about what the Drupal 8 initiatives are, and I suppose as the undercover stuff that we're going to see here. The initiatives are new to Drupal 8. Um, they focus on really important stuff, like uh, very key things that should happen to have a successful release of Drupal 8. And um, there is a leader for every initiative. Um, the main um, intention for that is to focus the development instead of um, having people going here and there touching stuff we have a very specific path that needs to happen for Drupal 8 and um, they get be better visibility and a lot of reach because they are um, they have a um, the initiative leaders, leaders are appointed, so you know where they are, you know who they are, and you know what's happening. Um, the initiatives are like a multilingual. We have um, the CMI initiative for configuration. What else? Do you know the initiatives that they are out there? Can you? Let's be a little active. You can ask questions at any point. If you want. Yes, sir. Web service initiative, the whiskey initiative, right? Yeah. And then we have the Scotch initiative that is blocks and layouts. Stuff like that. So that is very, very advertised, that's very known, but there are some stuff that's happening under the hood. So Drupal 8 is like this card that we bought. <laughs> so we open the hood and oh, well, if you like snakes, that's fine, right? So one of the things that happened. Is WYSIWYG in core? Um, you, you're already you're already aware of this, right? You know that Drupal 8 co comes with a CK editor, after all, and this is something um, that we, as a Drupal community, has been demanded uh, demanding for some time, right? We need a WYSIWYG. Every time that you install a Drupal site, you put a WYSIWYG. So the first thing that we do is complain. <laughs> That's too much WYSIWYG. <laughs> 
um, there was this um, blog post from Dries, and if you haven't seen this, uh, the keynote, I think it's for uh, Drupal Comportland from Karen McCree, and there's a very interesting flame there if you want to read it. <laughs> um, more stuff. Um, <coughs> tweak has happened. I mean, these are our beloved uh, PHP template files. No? PHP, a couple of times. And this is after? Or? After? <laughs> Still like PHP template myself. <laughs> but Twig is very cool. So this is in, this is stable, it's there. Um, one thing, this, this is a very um, sensitive subject. So let me advance that what I'm saying here is what may or may not happen, not my opinion. Um, disabled models are broken beyond repair. That was the original title of the issue in Drupal.org. And that was my inspiration to look for this image. <laughs> <laughs> That's my, the representation of what I think that is disabled model. Maybe. Sounds familiar? Maybe. Um, there won't be more disabling models, disabling models in Drupal 8. A model is either installed or uninstalled, but it's not, there is no uh, disabled status. Because disabled was fine, it would be when the, when the life was easier, and you get uh, data integrity risks. If you, if you have your models uh, disabled for a while, then the data of that model is still there, but then you enable it again, and you may have problems in the, in the way. Um, so they've removed, or uh, model disabled and all the hooks have been removed, or um, changed to install or uninstall. So all installed models are installed, <laughs> and the rest are not. So you get a lot of, um, of stuff, but we are in Drupal, so they may be a model for this, called disabled models. <coughs> so if you want that, for whatever reason, you have that model, you install it, and it should work. I don't know what's the status of that. Um, any opinions of that? On that? This is normally this is normally a flame subject. So <laughs> yeah, you see? Two opinions. Sure. Yeah, it's, it's just it's because it's a disabled module to see this model might have been making this up and, and then you put it back on again. When you, there is no disabled no, in the interface? It was useful for that. <laughs> it was useful for testing, yeah. There's a link there, this presentation will be online. And there's a link there, so you can follow the issues as well. Um, but yeah, it was useful, maybe. <laughs> Who knows? I mean, we, we miss it, or we will miss the thing or not. Um, another great thing that happened is to have the menus as entities. And um, config entities, we'll say this. Uh, I uh, will refer to this uh, uh, many times uh, today, but um, the same as uh, vocabularies are config entities, menus will be config entities. Uh, so the menu the links, the link itself, will be a content entity. Config entity is not fillable, you, can, you can't add fields to a menu, but you will be able to um, add fields to a menu link. So forget about all these models that uh, allow you to put an image in a menu and stuff like that, because now menus are entities. This is uh, incredibly uh, helpful. And now, what you define with hook menu for the developers in the room, um, the, those are menu links. The routing system, the part of that decides the route of the path of the, of the menu, is elsewhere. It's not here. You have separation of what the menu is, and what the, what the actual path for the routing is. So that's a very, very cool thing. So we got PHP filter gone. 
I feel safer already. Uh, maybe handy. I mean, if you're if you were using it, well, you shouldn't. But uh, <laughs> it, it was handy. I mean, I remember the Drupal five times where you couldn't do other stuff with views, but putting putting PHP there. So um, now uh, it always had uh, security and performance um, robots and. When you get a site that um, has PHP code somewhere, that PHP code could be anywhere. Could be hidden behind any block, any node, any view, and prepare to assault you when you update. <laughs> yeah, not, not nice. And, well, if you want to take the risk, there's a model for that. The PHP filter as a model. Yeah. Does anyone know why the PHP filter was ever even included in core? Okay, next slide. <laughs> <laughs> it's not there. <coughs> um, I guess it was it's, it's a quick, quick way to do stuff. I guess that's that's the main reason. And these are gone as well. Uh, we don't have profile, so the user are really entities. Maybe someone familiar with that in the room. Uh, <laughs> No more profile, <laughs> block, trigger, dashboard, open ID, for in Gamma. Oh. <laughs> I like yeah, it's like a very thing, the history of Drupal, right? I, Gamma? I, it's I like a very. No Gamma. Sorry. Garland is a country project now. Yeah, there is, a, there is a theme for that. Garland, there is a Garland responsive one as well. So, well, you have options. But that's not in core anymore. So these are gone. So this is a new slide. So let's see how this works. But there will there won't be um, upgrade path in core anymore. So going to upgrade PHP, that's not an option. Instead we have the model migrate, a version of the model migrate in core. So um, if you have did uh, an upgrade, a manual upgrade, going to upgrade PHP, at some point you will find unpleasant surprise. Uh, like uh, country models that don't work well, or data losses, or you must use it. I mean, normally you use uh, already for Drupal 7, you already use migrate. So um, um, the Drupal to Drupal will be handled as well with migrate. So uh, I'm talking about Drupal 7, Drupal, Drupal 6, Drupal 7 to Drupal 8, using a, an, a, a migrate path instead of an upgrade path. Um, there is a, a huge work in progress for the migrate for Drupal 8, so if you want to chim in, that would be really helpful. And it's the, it has a lot of tests, which is really good for migrations. Let's see a little h how this works in the inside. Everything is a YAML file, right? In the so we define the migrations in a YAML file. So let's see if this works. Yeah. So we define the ID. We have plugins for the both the service, the process, and the destination. So this is a really a plugin, a Drupal 8 plugin. So you can um, have a plugin for the user role. And that plugin will have um, will have uh, methods to handle whatever you need to, to, to do. Um, you have uh, plugins for the process. So say the ID of a user role should be a machine name. So it, this plugin will generate a machine name for us. Um, this will ensure that the entity is not duplicated. And a lot of stuff much more. I mean, there will be. Yeah. Those, those three running sequence then. Yeah, this is a, a jamel jamel array. Right. So you can do this is the, and that's an, that's in order as far as you know. So first is machine name and then the that ensures that the entities are duplicated. So there will be a, a bunch of um, default plugins. They are there already, um, but you can create a, your own as well. And then you have plugins for the entity as well. This is a for the destination, this is an entity user role. And user roles are configuration entities, so they are entities whatsoever. And this is how a plugin looks like. 
For example, this is a machine name, which is very simple to understand. And this is basically translating the value and, and generating only uh, factors and um, underscores. This is a very, very cool thing. And they talk about that this won't be ready for Drupal 8.0. This is playing with his magician here, but uh, they may include for Drupal 8.1 or 8.2, I don't know. Uh, the Drupal 6 process is mostly there, it's mostly finished. And uh, you can uh, look this, um, this will be online again, and you can look this um, blog post from uh, Claudio Christe, I think, and that's a very, very good documentation, full documentation almost of, of how to create nowadays migrate plugins for Drupal 8. Um, there are many more things that are happening. All these things that, that we are talking about, they are not inside of any initiative. These are um, things that are happening because people is pushing them without any for any formal structure. So these things already happen. Yeah, I like the the last one. <laughs> There are small for that as well, uh, and many, many, many others. So um, I think this may not. I don't know if this is true. PSR, still, PSR four is going to be going in now. It's going to be, yeah, yeah but it's not there. It's yet. not in yet. Okay. No, but it's going. So uh, because we didn't have enough files, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> we are going to a farther standard. Well, the directory structure won't be as yeah. Yeah, I think uh, now we have a lot of deep folders, and PSR4 will make it less folders. I yeah, think. it takes two levels of testing out. Right. So that's a good thing. I mean, that's something that if you put some, if you put a, a specific file in a specific directory, it will be it will be auto loaded by default. You'll need to do the files thing in your mods anymore, or including it. It will be auto loaded, included, which is great. Okay, so now enough for this. Uh, the first part of this talk is an excuse to talk about this. Uh, <coughs> because Drupal is a content management system and all the ways that the fields and the entities, which are the friends, come on. The friends are the entities, fields, and the friends as well. Um, are changed. Everything has changed. I mean, from the bottom to the to the top, everything is, is changed, and we'll see um, how this is changing. And let's start with the um, site building part because some models are in core now, um, out of the box, which will simplify everything. The new field types are the entity reference, which has been proven as a, a good standard for uh, related entities in Drupal 7 already. Um, we have date and time, email, telephone, and link. Those are good news because they are not the full models, but a simplification of the model. So it's a very basic stuff inside of core, and you can understand it. Entity reference. How do it works? You will see the some strange stuff here, but that's because everything is um, an entity now. We have data time with a nice calendar. We have the link model, but mm, with no internal URLs for the moment and no attributes for the moment. Uh, you can follow the, the issue here. They may be um, support for uh, internal internal URLs, like you put node one and it will just know what you're talking about. The email and telephone models are there as well, simplified versions again, um, with email validation, but nothing on the craziness of the telephone field for Drupal 6, 7, that you have like every country in the world there, and you can select every format in the world. No, it's just a text field. 
which is a good news. Okay, uh, this went in as well. Uh, guess, no spoilers, please. Guess what this is? The hidden widget. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have the hidden widget uh, in the, our entities. So we can uh, select something that is not really showing anything. It's not an input with a hidden. So you can use it to, I mean, I don't know how many times I've done this in Drupal 7. Put something, put a field in an entity, and then hide it from the from the edit from the user or hide it conditionally. <coughs> so this is built in. It's really good, really good thing, and is available for any any field that you that you pick. We have comments as a field as well, which is <coughs> great because we don't have that limitation of having comments just in notes. We can have comments in everything now. Uh, we have need any, uh, any external model. And uh, you can have several comment fields for a given entity type. So uh, I guess this is uh, probably killing forum model at the end. Um, you can reuse the comment field as any field and um, have a similar configuration. And there will be a, a great path, sorry, and then my great path, so okay, you can follow the, <coughs> the issue there. And this is a mixing into the CMI initiative, but all the fields and instances that we now create in, um, in Drupal are general files, are CMI based. So uh, you will create them in the interface as uh, you will normally, but it will write a YAML file. Instances of the nations are YAML files. They are supposed to be human readable YAML files. Well, yeah. Um, and you can deploy between environments, which is, the, I mean, the, the intention of CMI, I mean, the, the base of CMI. And so if I get this right, when you delete a field, those fields and instances are kept in state. State is a, like a um, way of um, storing a CMI variable, but it won't be exported. They will be there, but they won't be in the UI or exported until you run, until you run crop. And then will be deleted. This is happening more or less in uh, Drupal 7. When you delete a field, you will get a nice table called field deleted 35. And then you run grown and they are gone if you're lucky. <laughs> um, this will be much more uh, straightforward. You will have the state variable and then it will be just deleted, but never exported. And this is how a field definition looks like. Um, Important stuff, you define the entities that it goes to, you define what kind of um, what kind of field it is, and then you define other random stuff like cardinality or um, if it's active or the LAN code. Very important this one. And uh, note that we define as well the instance as a JAML file, but the instance name, I mean the file name for the YAML file of the instance, will be content type bundle field. Okay? We'll see that, why is that important later. But you have things like uh, the entity type, the bundle, settings for the instance that are uh, belonging to the instance. Yes, in, yes, in Drupal 7, but this will be like a representation in YAML file. So um, note here that we have UUIDs in core now. We have a generator as well. So do you remember the don't hack core thing? Yeah, well, 
When you play with your fields in Jamel, if you change the Jamel files directly without the UI, um, it will be like playing basketball with these guys. It will get weird. <laughs> so, don't hack your active config. Don't touch the Jamel files that you have on your side. Export and import. You can touch some Jamel files safely. Some of them, like variables. Variables also are safe. If you chase, uh, change your site uh, name for another change, for another string, that's safe. But if you change um, translatable to true in a field YAML file, that won't work. You have to re-import them. Okay, so don't call these guys to the court. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we, well, I, I just mentioned uh, a moment before, um, that uh, everything are entities, config entities, content entities, stuff like that. Um, this is because of very, very useful reason. Um, the API that you do for both configuration entities and content entities, like a field is a configuration entity, and your article 5 is a content entity. You can create configuration entities and content entities with the same API, calling entity create. You call entity create, and then you have a field. Yeah. Field image, and with field instance is the, the same way. I think this has changed recently, and this is called field config entity and field config instance or something, but the, the, the other stuff. And you can load them. So say I want to change the cardinality to 3 or to unlimited. I load a field, I change it, and I save. With a method save, not some strange uh, function that I may not know the, no the name. And delete. And I have the hooks as well. I think these are one of the latest hooks that are around. Um, this is very important. This is related with the YAML file for the field instance. Um, the fields are bonded to an entity type. Let's go over here. So this is not changing anything, really. This happened before. I mean, you couldn't do this in uh, 7. But um, you can share a field between bundles. Um, but the is attached to an entity type. I mean, you can create a field for nodes, and then you can use that field for any kind of bundle inside of that node, article, pages, whatever. But that field can't be used in another entity type. You need to create another field. Um, you can share that name of the field in that other entity type to have like a sense of um, equalness, or that is the same thing, but it's not the same thing. Okay, that's why the field ID, when you call a field ID, um, you will get entity type name of the field because they are both. But still, you can create the same because and there are JAML files, so you can create the same structure for the naming and keep the naming and keep a, keep a sense of, um, of um, virtually are the same thing, but they are not. So entity display is also a config entity. What's an entity display? The view mode. So you can create or you can export view modes uh, with the same YAML files. And you can um, do things like entity get display, and then you get the display, you change it your save. It's a config <coughs> entity as well. I suppose as, uh, I suppose as what happened in Drupal 7 that the display properties of an entity was in a variable or in display suite and then in, in another in another array in the settings of the instance and then this is a very very good improvement for, for development uh, developing um, view modes. So configurable for modes. What's this? You know the Drupal Haiku's uh, Twitter account? Very I can recommend it. I can recommend it a lot. 
So if you don't, if you aren't happy um, on what you're going to see, I'm going to demo this. This going to be, this could be very very wrong, but <laughs> let's see if if it's good. But if you don't like that, we can't be friends. So we have the manage form display, which is new, a new tab for the user entity, and. Um, here you have the username and password, the picture, which is a field now, wasn't before, etc. How many times you need to create a form, a registration form, that doesn't ask for the picture, but when you edit the account, you do ask for the picture. That's what the form modes are for. So you can select a new form mode. And then you have a tab the same way as view mode with register and another tab with default. And then I can go here and say for registration, the picture is not required. But for the rest of the forms that I ed edit the user, it is required. So this is a huge improvement. Imagine. Um, this is not built in, but you could create a multi step form of an entity um, of an entity saying this view mode is for step one, this view mode is for step two, this view mode is for step three, and it will be saved in the in the process. So this is very cool. I have ten minutes. Uh, click outside okay. here and next. It's cool. I mean, I really love the, the, the form displays. It's really cool, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> um, so, fields and plugins. So, everything in Drupal 8 related with fields is a plugin. So, we have the formatters, we have the field types, we have the widgets, and all of these are pluggable components, which means that you have classes, you have um, inheritance, and inheritance, and you can override your field for matters or whatsoever. So this is a very, very powerful thing. This will be how you create a widget. So this on top is what we, what is called annotations. So this is what is replacing the info hooks. So you create the class in the right directory, that this one is now like this, my model leave plugin fill widget my widget, but with 3SR4 it will change probably. <laughs> if it goes in, well, it should. So if the, if this will be shorter. So you define the widget, you define the ID, you define the, the, the label with a translation component. And then you have the field types that this widget applies to, like um, text area is only for text fields. And then you have the settings, and then you have a class. And in this, this class you have uh, default methods, but you could implement yours. So if you don't like a widget, but you like most of it for a field, you can extend this class and then uh, override whatever you want, which in Drupal 7 is not possible. This will be how you define a widget, the settings form, which will be to save the settings of that widget, the form element, which is the widget itself, the text area, or the date selection, or whatever. You have the error element, and my favorite one, massage form values, <laughs> which is a validation, I guess. Massage is the values, and then it goes very relaxed. <laughs> Formatters are the same thing. You have settings form, you have the summary, so it's listed in the, in the view mode. You have a prepare view and then you have a view. And if you don't like the formatter, something that is very common, you can extend it. There is also an improvement. If you, if you deal with the entity API in Drupal 7, we can say that this stuff is like entity API in core, <coughs> but improved. Um, 
like you have field definitions, you have property definitions, which I, this method I think is not there anymore because we don't call properties properties anymore. We call uh, base fields and configurable fields. Um, the node ID will be a property or base field, and the title will be a configurable field. Things so both of them are translatable as far as you know. And there's even more in field API, like you have. Oh, sorry. You have placeholders saying insert your name and then puts name or John's name. And then you click there and those away. Uh, computed fields, fields that not, doesn't necessarily see, exist in the entity but are calculated, like time ago. You have a timestamp and then you can have a property of field that calculates the time ago. Um, multiple uploads for image, uh, J, no? Like you can upload five images in the same node. That's just primitives but not files. Yes, it's for files. Oh. And drag and drop. <coughs> the user picture is a field. Again, the user picture is a field. <laughs> 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 uh, a lot of translation improvements, more of general permissions. And these are mostly, there are much more people responsible of this, but uh, uh, Christoph and Andre, who are here this weekend, are, and Whitechat and uh, Yves are responsible of the, of the field API changes with a tremendous effort. Um, Fabi, um, which is everywhere, and team as well, changing every <laughs> single comment around. Uh, Fabi and Fago are the responsible of the entity API changes. Um, so if you see these guys in one event, uh, it's worth to buy them a beer because they've done a tremendous effort to make this happen. And that's all, that's all I have to tell you. Thank you very much. Is there any further question? <laughs> We're going to give that out uh, in the in the coffee break. If you tweet, um, we'll put a specific instructions. Question here. You didn't mention uh, file entry. I didn't. Yeah. Any particular reason why? Um, I'm not sure if that's changed. I mean, I think it has changed a little, but I don't know. You're Think about media in Drupal 8 or something. Yeah, the kind of foundation for it. Yeah, yeah I, I'm not aware of changes in file and but that's a really great question. <laughs> yeah. Um, migration from six, sorry, um, site upgrade from 67. Yeah. Um, it, I mean, obviously, it doesn't always work, but when it works, it works. It can work quite well. I guess when you're migrating and you're just getting the, the content data. Yeah. What? How feasible is it? have a path which is migration but it's actually doing a, an upgrade so all your, your things like yeah. system variables, yeah. views, that all that kind of stuff. As we have uh, CMI and config entities, mm -hmm. migrate in Drupal 8 will be able to migrate variables and config entities. Okay. So, so there's, if, yeah, yeah if you can, yeah, there's already there. I mean, they're already there for Drupal 6. Um, there is a sandbox that I can point to you if you want. Uh, a lot of work is going there, but you have uh, upgrading the, the system variables uh, in, a, in a migration plugin, or creating menus in a migration plugin, or fields in a migration pl plugin. It's not about content anymore. It's all the whole site. You can migrate basically anything, and if it's not there, you can create a custom destination for it with a plugin, so it's, it's feasible. It's a very great so architecture. It's like, it's like an upgrade, but it is an upgrade, but we call it migrate <laughs> <laughs> because it's based on the migrate model. Yeah. It migrates to your new site rather than recombobulate the existing one. That's right. Yeah. 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 So you will do like the site structure, and then you migrate content and previous structures to it. That will be the phase. Any more? Yeah. Did I see? Settings in a PHP array that were in 
the annotation? Yeah. You're referring to the annotation? Let me see if I can go back to there. <coughs> Let's see the annotation again. Here, the PHP yeah. array inside of the comment. Yeah. Yeah, that's real. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is real. This is funny. Yeah. Yes, and that's another sensitive topic. I yeah. think now, when I last played with this, it wasn't the case, but I think now if you make a syntax error in that, you will get some kind of reasonable output telling yeah. you what the problem is. But six months ago, it just crashed and you didn't know why. Yeah, before it told you that some doctrine component has failed. And you will say, what? <laughs> I'm not using Symfony. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. This is how you define most plugins. So that's functional. It is. What are you setting? It's not quite PHP. No, it's not quite PHP. Is it YAML or is it shape? It's an annotation. That's how it works. You can define things like this. Translation. And then that would be understood. It's not the simple as another, right? It is actually like other projects use it. Yeah. Yeah. Doctrine. Yeah. Doctrine. Yeah. It's the only component we take in from doctrine as far as I know. We've taken the annotation. But, there is a but here. Many, but. Uh, um, you can define how your annotation work, works. So, you can define your own class to handle the annotation. And I will say more. There was, there was a way to discover the plugins with hooks that went away. But you can have you can modify your the way that your if you have a <coughs> plugin system, you can define the way that the plugin manager discovers your plugins. And if you don't like annotations, you can use whatever you want. It was there before; it, it went away. But there was there was an initial project to support hooks, hook inputs. That is not there anymore. Maybe that's a good thing for country, but. Do you know why that? self-contained. Yeah. So you have the settings and the code. But tell him, tell him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got five minutes between the next session and So do you have any any other part of the question for me? <laughs> <laughs> Later. Thank you. Thank you.